Hey guys, it's the Home Cinema Engineer, and I want to show you how to use the Odyssey Multi EQ Editor app for any receiver that it may be compatible with, because not every receiver that has Odyssey is going to be compatible with the app. And you'll be able to find out if your receiver is compatible with it by just going to the manufacturer's website. So when you first open it up, you're going to see this page and you can save multiple profiles. Now in here, um, I had 7.1 basement temporary, which was just the way I had had it set up and calibrated before I really got this room the way I wanted it to be. And then once I got my speakers set up the way I wanted them to be and built my Dolby Atmos KEF speakers and installed them, then I reran the Odyssey uh, calibration and made this um, made these adjustments. So you click on it, and this is going to be the first thing you see. So you got speaker detection results, room correction results, target sound options, mid-range compensation, curb editor multi-EQ filter frequency range, and Odyssey settings. And I'll take you through each one and try to describe them as best as I can for you to optimize your system for maximum performance. So first let's go into speaker detection results. We got the location, configuration, and crossover. So this just shows you all the speakers you have in it and what setting you have chosen, whether it's small or large, and then your crossover frequency. And you can edit it, and you can change it from small to large, but in most cases you're gonna to wanna to leave that small unless you have a true full range speaker. And then for crossover, this is more to preference, but Dolby and THX usually recommend around 80 hertz. So that's what I have mine set to. Here on the next page, if you click over, you can just see the distances that were measured and the way that it set the trim for every single speaker. Now, of course, you do have the ability to go in and edit this. And I have done so. I have, uh, in a previous video, you watched me calibrate my system. So these are the levels that I have them set to to get every single one of them playing um, pink noise at reference level. Next you have room correction results. So right here you have the front left and this is what it measured out and in green and on the right you have the response afterwards. And so you just click left or right to toggle through them. This is the front right, center, surround left, surround right, surround back left, back right, top front left, top front right, top rear left, top rear right. Subwoofer one and two because you cannot independently change the subwoofer frequency response if you have two subs, unfortunately. Hopefully they'll make that a capability in future iterations. Next, you have target sound options. And this just lets you determine what type of high frequency roll off you want. Now, in the first one, it looks like the high frequency roll off starts at around, I would imagine 8K. It's kind of hard to tell because they don't let you zoom into this. And it's not too steep. And in the second one, it's a much more steeper roll off. And this is just a matter of preference. I don't think it's gonna affect it too much because there's not too much happening in the 10 kilohertz region and above, so that's why they allow you to roll it off on both of these graphs right here. But just for 
the sake of getting more of everything in the frequency spectrum being 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz, I chose the first high frequency roll off setting. Next, you have mid range compensation. So, mid range compensation is just a setting that allows you to dip down a frequency, I believe it's 2.5 kilohertz, down in all the speakers, and that's just for added clarity. Now, personally, I chose to keep this setting off, but if you wanted to turn it on, it's just a matter of clicking. Next, you have Curve Editor. So this simply allows you to adjust the target curve you want the room correction to adjust to. So if you wanted to say boost 1K, or literally any frequency you choose, you can just adjust it the way you like. You can also have it dip down. Now, it would be really nice if it gave you 7 to, say, 20 uh, points to where you could um, adjust the frequency response up or down. But it's kind of going for a flat curve, so I understand why they didn't allow you to do this. That kind of control is more meant for some of the more powerful room correction softwares out there like ARC and Dirac or getting a mini DSP system installed, which I do plan to do in the future. But for now, I'm just going to leave it flat. But you can go through and change the curve for anything. Next, you got multi-EQ filter frequency range. And this is just simply the range of frequencies you want the um, room correction to affect. So right there, it's full band, 20 hertz, all the way to 20,000 kilohertz, 20K. But uh, you can adjust to where it only affects everything from 20 to, say, 1K, or wherever you choose. And again, you can just go through every single speaker in your system and do that. Last, you have the Odyssey settings, and these are described in here which I wish this app would um, describe better for those who are not so knowledgeable in this type of stuff and describe literally everything that you're doing. But on here, on this particular thing, it does show you a description of what it's doing. So um, and here you'll see Odyssey Dynamic EQ. And it just says, preserves the proper balance between high and low frequencies and maintains the even surround envelopment as master volume is adjusted. Sometimes I turn that on, sometimes I turn it off. Uh, most of the time I leave it on. Odyssey dynamic volume adjusts the dynamic range to maximize the impact of content during night listening. This I usually keep off. I find that it tends to, um, it basically tries to compensate for you listening to movies at night when you're trying to keep it down but you still want that full effect so most of the time it's it's going to kind of dip down those lower frequencies and boost up those highs so i almost always leave it off and the last odyssey lfc or low frequency containment stops low bass frequencies from traveling through the walls without sacrificing bass enjoyment in the listening room this I have found doesn't really work too well. This is again something for nighttime listening when you want to watch those big explosive action scenes late at night when say your wife is sleeping um, and or if you're living in an apartment and you don't want to disturb your neighbors um, you can turn that on. Essentially it's just gonna brick wall your uh, subwoofers and basically give you little to no bass response. Um, but again, this being a dedicated theater in my basement, I don't really have to worry about that. And I never usually watch movies past 10 o'clock anyways. And that's usually when she goes to sleep. So, done. So those are all the options. 
And then once you're done making the changes, you would then have to send to the receiver to send those changes. But I've already done that, so I'm just going to hit cancel. So um, now I'll just kind of give you my opinions and thoughts. Um, overall, I really do like this Odyssey Multi-EQ editor app. It is $20. I do feel like it is worth it. Um, I do wish it was more powerful. I do wish that they would add a few more things, make it a little bit more comparable to, say, Dirac or Arc from Anthem. But um, it's still a big step in the right direction compared to what Odyssey used to do before they had this app. And now you can kind of change things and fine-tune it and really get it to sound the way you want it. Um, is it the most powerful or best room correction software out there? Definitely not. But is it better than it used to be? Absolutely. And I would recommend it if you have a Denon, Marantz, or Macintosh, or any other receiver with Odyssey that is compatible with this app. Because I've found that not every single receiver that has Odyssey is compatible with the app. It's usually the mid to high end tier models from any of those companies I mentioned that are gonna offer this type of control with the editor app. Um, so overall, I do like it, but um, if I could, there are a lot of things I would change. So uh, yeah, I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed this and I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section below and I will respond as soon as I see it. I'm usually pretty good about responding. And yeah, this is a, an interesting time. I've been watching a lot more movies, obviously, because I am having to self-quarantine here in Washington State. So I've been watching uh, a bunch of movies. I just got done watching all three of the original Bourne uh, movies, Jason Bourne. And tomorrow I'm going to watch more movies, do some gaming, uh, really try to get as much theater use as possible. I got another week before I maybe have to return to work. So I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy, smart, staying inside, staying away from people, you know, not going stir crazy and just having fun listening to music and movies and enjoy those theaters. So yeah, if you guys like the video, please hit that thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And please hit the bell notification uh, so you'll be notified when the next video drops. Until next time, happy watching.